I don't think so. I think that Russia is trying to defend, defend its, um, its national interests. And um, it is not Russia that is moving in the direction uh, of um, NATO. It is NATO that has been moving from 1997 in the direction of Russia, incorporating new and new countries and coming to the Russian borders. So it shows that Russia is not changing the rules uh, of the world. Um, NATO is changing the rules of the world by bringing more and more countries inside, by establishing military bases, moving American and European troops to the Russian border. We have 4,000 uh, American uh, and European soldiers and officers uh, on the border with Russia in the Baltic republics. It's not Russia that has been sending its troops to the border of Germany or of France or of Spain. So uh, I think uh, that uh, the revisionist side uh, is, um, uh, is, is NATO as an alliance and uh, of course Russia is uh, worried about its security so the measures it is taking has nothing to do with revisionism uh, they have to do with security. Russia stand uh, towards uh, NATO and uh, EU eastward expansion uh, is that at some point uh, it will endanger uh, Russian interests in the field of security and um, in the field of our neighborhood. We would like to have good neighbors. Any state would like to have good neighbors. That's only natural. But unfortunately, uh, NATO is, uh, as I said already, sending troops to those countries. NATO is establishing bases in those countries, like in Poland, in uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia. Uh, and, uh, of course, it prevents a possibility of a good neighbor neighborhood. In 2008, the Bush administration tried to bring into NATO Georgia and Ukraine. And um, I think uh, it was a very dangerous uh, development because uh, Ukraine has uh, around 1,500 kilometers of common border with Russia. And if Ukraine goes inside NATO, it will be a major crisis between Russia and NATO. So I would like uh, NATO to understand that it cannot move endlessly towards Russia because it will create a very critical situation. And uh, as we are talking about a possible uh, political conflict between nuclear powers, Russia is a nuclear power, United States is a nuclear power, France, Great Britain. So it may mm, acquire quite uh, dangerous features. So I think that uh, it is time to stop NATO expansion eastward. If NATO wants to have a military cooperation with Ukraine or Georgia, it's fine. But one thing is cooperation, another thing is uh, membership. And so I think that um, Russia will be uh, categorically opposed to uh, further NATO expansion. It's true that all countries have the right to choose the military alliances they want to be part of. But it's also true that Russia uh, has also the right to react to those decisions. And I don't think that uh, neither the West nor Russia are interested in a further negative development in this field. I don't think this uh, necessarily positions Russia uh, on a course of direct collision with the West uh, because um, I think that um, there is nothing that cannot be prevented at this point. I think that if, uh, as I said, NATO stops with this uh, uh, expansion that has been engaged for, for the last 20 years. That would help. I also think that Russia is quite willing to discuss issues of European security with NATO countries. Uh, I think that Russia is quite willing to discuss, for instance, uh, the solution of the crisis in Syria with the United States. Less so with Europe because Europe does not play any role in Syria. Europe is just following the United States, is basically absent from the Syrian crisis. Russia supports the efforts of President Trump to proceed to a denuclearization of the uh, of the Korean Peninsula, and we support supported Trump's meeting with uh, Chairman Kim, the, the head of North Korea. So there are a number of areas where we could agree, and uh, the best example was the agreement on Iran, the so-called nuclear deal with Iran, where Russia stood together with uh, five uh, uh, Western countries. And we obtained a very important agreement. Unfortunately, Donald Trump decided to move out of this agreement. Uh, and um, paradoxically enough, now Russia, Great Britain, France, 
Germany and the European Union are on one side and the United States are on the other side. So it shows that on some issues Russia is even closer, for instance, to European countries and to the European Union than the United States are. And I can predict that there will be more contradictions between the United States and the European Union. And I think the EU will need Russia on a number of occasions, uh, especially um, in critical situations um, uh, on the Eurasian continent. We don't know what to expect from uh, the United States. Uh, but Russia has proven that on a number of issues it's willing to have a dialogue and willing to have a cooperation. I have to tell you that uh, under Trump, the relations between the United States and Russia reached their lowest point since I don't know, don't know when. Uh, Trump introduced a second round of sanctions against Russia and a third round of sanctions against Russia. Trump took away a Russian consulate in San Francisco. It does not function anymore. Trump sent away 60 uh, Russian diplomats uh, from the United States. Uh, they have been um, repatriated to Russia. So I would say that at today's um, uh, point, our relations uh, are almost non-existent. It's, uh, it, it's a political confrontation. And so I, um, I, I don't think that uh, uh, we can easily move from this dead point to, to a much better relationship. Uh, at the same time, uh, Trump seems to understand that without Russia um, it will be harder for the United States to solve international issues. And that's why recently he suggested to bring back Russia to the G7 and to make a G8 once again. And Trump also um, uh, is pretty uh, enthusiastic, as it seems, on a possibility of his meeting with Putin. This meeting will put, um, take place in Helsinki on uh, July 16. So will it be just a show, as uh, President Trump likes to, to produce, or it will be a meaningful conversation with some agreements? We will have to see. Now, I don't think we can immediately uh, go to a breakthrough. But I hope that after this meeting there will be at least the beginning of a normalization of the relationship between Moscow and Washington. Because as I said, today they are at a dead point. We don't talk to each other, we don't meet each other, there are almost no contacts. So if Trump uh, manages to reach an agreement with Putin that the two major nuclear powers of the world should have a meaningful dialogue, it will be already a success.